Thanks for joining us Behind the Frontline, a video podcast providing timeless solutions to everyday workforce and workplace challenges. Frontline Training Solutions is an express employment professionals company, strategically placed between the workplace and the workforce with professionals standing by, ready to combat your unique challenges. Learn more about what we do at FrontlineOn.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in today for Behind the Frontline. This is actually our pilot episode, and we're so excited to be doing this to provide more practical solutions um, for companies to take away and create a better culture and create a better workplace. And so I'm sitting in the studio today with Nathan Lehman, our Managing Director for Frontline Training Solutions, with Ryan Williams, our Leadership and Team Development Manager, and Lorraine Medici, our Leadership or Director of Training and Development. <laughs> That's right. You. Yeah. That's yeah. a mouthful. Yeah. Director of Training and Development. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're sitting in the studio today, and we have the question that we're going to be answering, and hopefully we're going to be answering Well, it. We're going so, to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. So the question today is, I am a new leader. What should I do? Yeah. What a, what a great question. I actually want to back the question up just one step, and that is, why are you a new leader? Yeah. You know, why is it that people go into leadership positions? And I think there's a variety of reasons. I think sometimes people feel obligated, like, you know, it's the next necessary step. Uh, sometimes people really aspire to be leaders. Um, sometimes it's nobody else to do it. I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people get into the position of being a leader just by default, kind of. And that puts them in a tough spot, Right. you know? So I think that, that question in and of itself can also help us answer the bigger question of what do I do? Like, what was my motivation for being a leader in the first place? Yeah. And honestly, if you weren't really thinking about a leadership position and just got tapped on the shoulder, the question is, do you even want to be a leader? Right. Right. And is it okay to say no? Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's tough right there. Right. Because There's nothing oof. wrong with saying no. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you go back to that question, why? Right. Yeah. It, when we're sitting across from these leaders in these different situations, it's, you can very quickly see it, you know, who wants to be there, who doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it changes everything about how they approach their role. And, and, you know, as a company, it's like, we got to really consider the impact if we're putting somebody in a position and, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm sitting there as a new leader and I'm, my heart's not in it. Yeah the expectations of the role it it's okay to say listen my heart's not in this um and i would really just like to be an individual contributor i think probably most of the time though what do they say i'll do it because it's what more money money yeah Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so okay. it's hard to say no and back away from that now that i've got that bigger paycheck or at least i'm being told that's what's coming um, but if that's your motivation like the bigger paycheck I mean, maybe that's okay at first, but it's not going to sustain you long term because that paycheck comes with a lot of other stuff, a lot of, a lot of other expectations. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, th I think I think what you said was uh, really thoughtful um, with respect to leadership. I think what we start doing in organizations is just ooh, we have an opening. We start filling things in, and we, we're not very intentional about who should be in leadership. Do they want to be in leadership? What would be the potential impact? What strengths are they bringing? Um, what what gaps might there be? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And how do you set them up once they are a leader exactly. to be successful, which is kind of where the question's coming from. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do I do yeah. now? So, you know, we kind of can assume maybe best of intentions here that that individual's in the position for the right reason. But I think it's worth asking the question, you know, why are you a leader? What drove you to take that? role right. what motivated you yeah. and is that motivation going to be enough to sustain you long term yeah in the position well you know if you look we're so we're asking we're saying you know so i'm a new leader it's time to do a little bit of introspection mm -hmm. right as to why Absolutely. right why why did i say yes to this position okay is it for the money not saying that's a bad thing yeah, it's right part of that's, the deal. that's fine it's part of the deal um, but that's probably not going to sustain you for what's going to be expected of you, right? Uh, over the long term, because mm -hmm. being in that position is difficult, mm -hmm. especially if you're transitioning into over people that you have been coworkers with, right? There's a lot of the relational dynamics. There's all that stuff you have to start thinking about. 
that's going to have an impact on how you feel about your job mm -hmm. and how you feel about your day to day. And, you know, looking at a lot of statistics that are saying, you know, with everything that's happened over the, the course of the last, what, three years, four years, uh, the pressure that's being put on on especially frontline leaders has really grown. Uh, a lot of companies have been grappling with, you know, the shortage of people, all that stuff. And they go, where's our biggest pain point? Oh, it's the frontline leader. We need to fix the frontline leader, right? We've seen that in talking to clients and, and, and whatever. But then that pressure has really led to a lot of people starting to ask that question. It's like, do I really want to be, right. be that person? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Maybe mm -hmm. asking the question, would I do this without a pay increase? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know many people that would say yes to that. I agree. Right. Yeah. Probably right. not. You know? and, thank you, but no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and yeah, we we come across people that they go, you know what? I really care about the impact that I have on the people around me. Right. That's a leader. You know. And and so if you're not, again, new leader, if you're not willing to really start asking yourself that question, it's like, what kind of influence or impact do I have on the people around me? Yeah. I I think. I think probably new leaders or people going into a leadership role for the first time think of leadership as much more of a, a directive all the time, telling people what to do, when to do, how to do it, and not doing what you're saying is the really thinking about when I'm in that position, it's a tremendous amount of influence and impact that we have. We know statistically, the number one reason people leave organizations is the relationship they have with their immediate supervisor. So, you know, when you just think about that responsibility alone, mm -hmm. it, it should give you some food for thought. Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like? Which to me then begs the question, what are organizations doing to answer the part of the question? What, what do I need to do? How do I set them up? Mm. How do I set them up well? Yeah, right. You can't just put them in the role. Yeah. Expect them to be great at it. I want to go back to one thing you were saying, Ryan, which could be kind of a first step if we want to talk about some practical things, is that just self-reflection. Start mm -hmm. with the self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you could ask is, why Why am I a leader? Why did I say yes? That was one of your... But who am I as a leader? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how do I um, connect with people? What are my natural strengths in that relational side of things? And then where are my blind spots? What happens, you know, when, when I'm under stress and things get tough, you know, I know for me personally, and you guys see it daily, probably, mm -hmm. um, when I am, when I'm under stress, I pull back, right? I kind of shut down and get quiet and bury my head in the work and all of that. And that has an impact on the broader team. Maybe they're feeling the same thing. Maybe, maybe they're having a hard time and, uh, you, it'd be nice to be able to be in a place where you can just react however you want to react, but now you've got that broader connection to the team and to the organization. And so do you know that about yourself? Mm -hmm. What is your style? How do you react under stress? What are the natural strengths that you bring to the table, uh, that help you be more effective with people? Mm -hmm. Do you, have you done an inventory on that? And there's a lot of ways you can do inventories. Mm -hmm on that yeah, yeah. It, i was thinking what, what you were saying nate is when i think about the leaders that sit in our signature one of our signature classes purpose-driven leadership training how many of them in the first few sessions are very much wired to go how do i get people to just do their job yeah. mm -hmm. and as we go further in the class and realize that that class was developed to understand who i am as a leader how do i show up those things that you're saying under stress, what does that look like? They begin to see that leadership is much bigger, has much greater influence and impact than just, hey, you need to do your job. You need to be here on time. It's, it's so much more critical. And quite honestly, if we can get more leaders to be thinking that way, when you're talking about um, best practices and doing that self-reflection is also being willing to learn you've mm -hmm. got to if you're in that leadership position for the first time just asking more seasoned leaders and watching them and what's their influence look like but having that open-mindedness i think is important mm -hmm. that's great yeah i i think one of the things i see a lot right we talk about this all the time you get tapped on the shoulder because you're really good at your job 
Mm. And so the other thing I would say to a new leader is saying, don't think that that's going to gonna yeah gonna be your yeah. your like it's foundation like for leadership it's yeah. not going to translate to you know i think a lot of companies and we're thinking well it's like oh if i promote somebody that's really good at their job that'll just multiply them suddenly we'll just take them yeah. and everybody around them will suddenly become better yeah because they're good at their job it's yeah. like we know that that's actually actually that can have an inverse yeah. effect if yeah. we're really good yeah. at our job actually the people around us actually don't get better right when i get promoted right because i'm doing it all because i'm going to do it for them yeah. because i i actually believe i'm just better and mm -hmm. who are these people that just can't live up to my standards mm -hmm. right? yeah that mm -hmm. that is actual the research is that what makes you successful as an individual contributor will work against your success as a leader if you don't stop and recognize that mm -hmm. you have to get out of the work itself and focus mm -hmm. on the people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I can think of a great example from my own journey. It's the second time I was leading people in my career in a formal business environment. And I was put into a role that I was going to be the uh, HR manager for a particular part of an organization, about 350 people. Uh, kind of in that organization, I had two individuals on my team reporting to me who were deep generalist experts. Like they knew the processes. They knew our hiring process, the FMLA process, our compensation processes, they were just embedded in all of that. And I had never been in their role before. Mm. So now I'm their leader and I'm their manager. And it struck me just how important it is and how, how important it was not to feel like I had to go in and be the expert because I couldn't be like, I literally couldn't do their job better than them. So what's your job then, if, yeah. if, if that's the case? Well, your job is to empower them, to train them, to Absolutely. develop them, and not train them necessarily on the task because they know that better. Train them on influencing and how they partner with other parts of the organization, mm -hmm. how they're connecting with people and communicating. Those things I can impact. But what I can't impact is when somebody comes up and, and they want paperwork for this or for that, or we need to hire somebody, or we need to terminate someone. I don't, I didn't know what the process sure. was, mm -hmm. but I had a team that did. Yeah. And if I kind of had the mindset that you're talking about where, oh, I, I'm the leader because I'm the best, mm -hmm. that would have been just demoralizing to them. Mm -hmm. They would not have been engaged. They would not have liked working in that organization because I was trying to Im insert myself into something that I'm frankly not qualified to insert myself into, you know? So that I appreciate you kind of sharing that story, Nate. So back before I got into training and coaching and I was um, in the legal field as paralegal, I, I'm going to give the example of what it like was like to be a person, an individual contributor, a paralegal at that time for an attorney who was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, but his influence, his ability mm -hmm. to connect with his people was horrible. I felt belittled. I felt devalued. I didn't feel that I could go to him. He was not approachable. So he was great at being an attorney, mm -hmm. but his influence on those things about being a leader of people, it just, it wasn't there. Yeah. And, and the, the end result was number one, I got fired because I couldn't <laughs> live up to, you know, it's not a great story here, but yeah. I, I will always remember how it impacted me to go, I don't ever want to work for a leader like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and isn't that, isn't that an insight for new leaders? Yeah. Like think about your best and your worst leaders. Cause yeah. you've probably had a number that you've reported to over the years. Yeah. And you have a place to start or at least think about, or what are the characteristics of the best leaders that you want to emulate and be really intentional on in thinking about what that looked like. And then the other side of that equation, you know, what do I not want to do? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we're jostling a lot of these expectations. Like that's that's something that's really become crystal clear. And you know, looking reflecting on my own experience too is going, what is actually expected of me in this role? And that's a question I would encourage a new leader to start asking. Mm -hmm. Right? Ask your manager. Ask your your leader. And you know, we've talked about this a lot with with companies. Is like, what what is leadership? What does it mean right. to actually manage people well? Like, what does that look like? 
because these are all like they're all great ideas right but unless we really have a crystallized picture and you know i can develop for myself and then my manager has their own picture you know everybody's got this picture of what a good leader looks like mm -hmm. yeah so i think what what you're saying and i think it's really important is that organizations have to stop and really identify competencies what does that leadership right. look like at this level in the mid level and, and higher so that there is clarity around the role it was interesting in class how many people um raise their hand where they i asked them you know when you think on a scale of one to ten what what's your level of clarity around the expectations on what mm -hmm. you need to do boy the numbers were so low They're like well it depends on who i talk on this day and you know what what this leader is going to say and it's the the frustration and the confusion is like yeah, no wonder I'm frustrated at the end of the day. Sometimes I want to quit. Mm. So I, I really appreciate what you're saying around that, um, understanding what 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 are the expectations. Yeah, mm. and I want to empower you know new leaders to go to to ask that question because I, I think what I've seen a lot is you know that player coach orientation within companies, and what I mean by that is I have my own individual contributor things that I still have to do, but then I've been handed a bunch of people as well mm -hmm. right it's the mm -hmm. agile organizations or whatever you know however we want to phrase that but basically uh we don't have the ability to not have you still deliver your mm -hmm. numbers your projects your whatever but then we also want you to manage these people yeah. and so just practically speaking how much time where am i going to find the time to have the one-on-one -on -one conversations which I mean, we talk about that, you know, having that one on one conversation with each of your people to establish a connection, to establish an expectation around what that relationship is going to be like. Right. There's a lot of things that I need to do. But before we get into all that, it's like, where am I going to find the time mm -hmm. to do these things? Uh, do my individual contributor numbers get to drop while I'm spending time developing, developing people? Yeah. you know whatever and that's I, I think, a that's an alignment conversation right? right with your manager with the organization goes back to better understanding expectations mm -hmm. for the role mm -hmm. you know that's going to be an essential part of the the journey figure out you know what should i be focusing my time on and how do i divide it up with my team and i, and I think that's actually a really interesting kind of thing to be thinking about is like what are some practical steps too you started saying hey let's have one-on-ones like i mean can you potentially yeah uh, it depends on the setting right some organizations in some settings you may not have physically be able to do that just because of the way this the work is structured mm. but even in those settings how are you connecting saying hi being personable um people watch what leaders do that's another time. one of the things that's different about your life now yeah you know they're they're watching and they're saying who are you saying hi to who are you not saying that's hi right to? yeah right who who have you asked about their vacation and who didn't you ask yeah. and you know someone who is more a little bit more of a natural introvert i'm not always thinking that way but i've learned over the years that I need to be very intentional about including everybody as much as I can. I'm still learning in that. Mm -hmm. I'm not great at it, but people are paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd say a good first step is to connect with your team, lead with empathy and mm -hmm. you know, for sure relationally with each person. You got to build a relationship yeah. somehow, mm -hmm. but, uh, but doing it in a way, you know, we don't necessarily get to choose who's on our team. We get promoted. We're in a leadership role now, or we get hired into a, we, it, it comes with a team yeah you know and maybe over time you get to kind of form your team and pick the people but chances are there's a couple of folks on your team that maybe you don't relate to as well or as easily that doesn't give you a right to just kind of pass them off and not engage that's going to be important too and and yet mm -hmm. nate we're telling people be empathetic connect right be in tune find out who they are and for some folks, that might not be a very natural thing yeah. to do. So if yeah. I'm a new leader, who is going to set me up and help me in that journey to stretch myself in areas where I never really had to think about yeah. other people um, except doing my job? And how do I be empathetic to uh, to a situation where I'm like, ah, I just don't have it anymore here for you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think 
One thing that I would encourage for new leaders is ask questions. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to ask your supervisor or skip supervisor or peers to the left or right of you. Be curious to set yourself up for success in those areas, especially if you can, if you have the awareness of some of those gaps. And your team. Yeah. They've yes, got a and lot your of team, answers. getting the feedback yeah. from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that I see that so often, it, you know, it comes back to not to, to harp on this point, but there's a lot of insecurity, I think, you know, I think back to me stepping into different leadership roles, especially when I was stepping into leadership roles over people I was coworkers with. There's a lot of insecurity there of going, I got to have it all together now. Yeah. Right. I, I have to be, you know the expert in things i have to have all the answers the firefighter the fireman I, I, yeah the... and, you know nate you were talking about that earlier um but you are going to set yourself up so much better if you take a step back and realize not having the answers asking questions being being open to admit that you've you know failed or that you didn't get something right is going to go a lot farther for you Absolutely. as a new leader than than pretending like you have yeah. all the answers, have it all together. It's um, so counterintuitive. It's very counterintuitive. So lead with vulnerability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some vulnerability, which is uncomfortable. I think for so many, maybe more for some. I know for me personally, you know, we talk about that self reflection. Looking like I don't have the answer, I know, is a big stress point for me. I know that's maybe not so much for other people. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where I know, oh, there's a, a targeted area because of, you know, some of that reflection and some of the work right, that we do. There's a target area that I really need to work on mm -hmm. that. I know that's going to have a, a large impact mm -hmm. on my ability mm -hmm. to lead. I mean, when you look at, you know, the disc results, um, I'm sure that's a stretch for some people. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, I, you know, OK, that's what, why it's one of my favorite tools is because that was probably as a new leader. Uh, one of my biggest ahas were, were just a couple of things. I realized naturally I didn't walk around and tell my team they were doing a good job. Like everybody likes hearing that You're they're doing, doing so a good job. Better. I'm doing yeah. so much better now. Right. <laughs> but it wasn't personal. It no. wasn't personal. It was very much like I just believe people are intrinsically motivated and that thought just doesn't enter my mind. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't that like I had a bad attitude towards my team. But that didn't matter, right? Their yeah, interpretation of my behavior, exactly, yeah. right, was that I didn't care, or, um, or I was, you know, had such high standards that they can never meet, which was also true. Which is why I never, I had these these expectations. Talking about expectations in the back of my mind, that had I done that, I would have done it X Y Z, mm. right? So then I don't say job well done because they didn't go above and beyond mm. this. And this unspoken didn't expectation do it the way you would have done. They didn't do it yeah. the way I did. Yeah. I I would have done it. Right? right. So we're thinking about asking for feedback from those who are leading us, but with leading with vulnerability. And for those of us, it might be a little bit more of a stretch to kind of yeah. connect empathetically with the people that you're leading. Maybe asking for feedback from them as well. Yeah. Oh, we should that's be doing that. Huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Build, huge. Builds trust. Builds yeah. trust. I yep. mean, I you know I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Is like one of the first things you can do, which is scary. But talk about leading, yeah, leading with vulnerability. Talk about um, really set building trust, setting yourself up for success with the people that you've now been uh, uh, put sure. over, right? Yeah. What's one thing I could do to improve from your perspective? Mm hmm. Asking, asking imagine people that. that imagine and if you ask that if i if you were my supervisor and you asked that like you just saying that right now mm -hmm. ryan like immediately there's a sense of like wow i feel like connected to you like mm. you are being humble enough and you want to hear my voice mm -hmm. like yeah. even just now when you did that i was like I, I, the, the trust is it's incredible yeah. how can that builds up yeah so you're mm -hmm. inviting me to the table right yeah. now yeah 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 so just a, a model or you know it's like what's you know you, you know i'll know i love what's one thing i can start right. doing that would help you know what's one thing i should stop doing and what's one thing i can continue yeah those uh, three like parts. i i love that start stop continue yeah. and so go ask each individual person so lead because you because you know, you're talking about that earlier. It's like, Lorraine's like, how do I get these people to do X, Y, Z? How do I get them to be more motivated? How do I start with yourself, right? Start by going and asking for feedback and then you model the way. Yeah. yeah. 
I would say, don't be surprised, however, if people are like, uh, nothing, uh, no, we, nothing. Uh, you do yeah. everything. We're, we're all good, boss. <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm not about to say yeah, anything. You're great. <laughs> exactly. So mm-hmm. it might take a few times, it, mm-hmm. uh, and it might take a little bit of, of um, focus over time to get people open yeah. to doing that. Yep. Um, that is the the ability to have that conversation is going to be built on so many other things that you're doing to build trust. Yeah. Yep, right. Because yep. that's a vulnerable thing for them too. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, you're putting me on the spot and you I might say something to you and like, well, there's my last paycheck. <laughs> yeah. But right. but also I think you have to explain to them, here's why I'm doing yes. this. Right. Define you're, the why. Exactly. The exactly. Mm-hmm. And so it might feel uncomfortable for you, but I really do want to know. Mm-hmm. I want to know what I can continue doing, stop doing and yeah. start doing. Right. So I think um, you have to explain it. And you're right. I think it might take a couple of times. But, um, yeah. So it's almost setting those expectations, but then leading through them. That's right. Con- consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah. yeah. I think you're so right. I mean, I've been asked that and I've been like, yeah, I just don't, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. It's not worth it. To I don't know if you have past same. experience where right. it's like, I haven't been free to talk. Yeah. You know, I don't feel comfortable with this because I don't know how this is going to turn out. And and, you know, here's here's maybe a, a, another way to look at those three questions. Mm-hmm. If somebody has a difficulty of saying to their boss, I'd really appreciate if you would, you know, stop doing X, Y, Z. Maybe another say is, what am I doing well that's impacting you, that's influencing you? So start with something that someone's able to open up and say, I really appreciate it when your door is open or you're like, I, I want to hear from you or I appreciate it when um, you ask me my opinion in voices, uh, in uh, meetings. Um, and then conversely, you can say, what are some areas that you would like to see maybe change that I can do better? Hmm. So I think there's different ways to yeah, do that. Yeah. But I think, I, I think it's, it's, it's just a, an interesting way to. Yeah. yeah. So just to kind of summarize these, we talked about um defining your why and kind of giving the vision we've talked about getting to know your team Mm -hmm. and leading with empathy we've talked about setting expectations and leading through them um another thing i'd like to throw in there is celebrating wins yeah Mm -hmm. you know celebrating wins publicly and then giving corrective feedback privately Mm -hmm. yes i make sure yeah and you know really understanding your people and how they like to get feedback i can think of a time when I was working in an organization responsible for like employee rewards, like recognition, like 10 year rewards, five, 10, 20, 25. And the individual responsible for that program and putting all of the awards and plaques together and whatever. Well, it was her turn to get recognized. Mm -hmm. We did this in our uh, quarterly, you know, all hands meeting, hundreds of people there, right? Mm -hmm. She did not come. Oh. because she did not want to be recognized that way. Yeah. Like it was good to, to recognize her, but she was a very private person. So understanding how do people like to be recognized? Yeah. And that comes, goes back to just getting to know your people. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, one of the real practical things that I've, I've seen done um, is creating a list of questions that you try to get answered over time with the people on your team. Like, you know, family first you know names kids names where do they go on vacation what's their favorite restaurant you know favorite movie favorite music whatever just and not that you're sitting there going okay what's your favorite movie (laughs) what's your favorite restaurant some of us need that maybe that would be fine too i was just with with a guy you know in one of the classes is like that would be very helpful for him yeah exactly you know he kept talking about it's like getting to know your people he was like eh really maybe How a questionnaire is that no mm-hmm. yeah you know? i was once asked the question by a leader um what motivated me and if i wanted more money if i wanted more gift cards and i honestly just wanted time to bounce my ideas off of them yeah mm. i wanted my voice to be mm. shared yeah and celebrated yeah and you kind of keep that cheat sheet for each of your people in your drawer at your desk or on your phone or something and take a look at it every once in a while and see if you've made a connection with them a little bit more on a personal level because you have asked them about their daughter whose name is whatever you know or their their hobby of playing soccer on the weekends or whatever you know that as weird as that can be that makes a huge connection for folks 
Well, 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 think about this. We spend a minimum of about 40% of our waking hours at our jobs. Mm -hmm. It would be like being in a household and you guys are all over at my house and we're doing dishes and you're vacuuming and you're dusting and we never talk to each other. Sounds you know great. Yeah. <laughs> Can right. we go to my house yeah, actually? <laughs> well, you guys are back. I, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, but, but yeah, it's yeah. like, how weird is that? Not, yeah. but yeah. you know, being a, on a different style on the disc, I want that connection. But I think we forget that we're human beings and social yeah. animals. Yeah. Well, you know, the celebrating wins is funny because I brought that up earlier. It was like, I was, you know, <laughs> Captain Blood kind of thing. And I didn't realize it, right? Um, that. I, I didn't celebrate wins because nobody was going above and beyond it. And I had these, all these standards mm -hmm. or whatever, cause they weren't doing things the way that I thought they should be done. And you know, the success wasn't quite whatever, but man, what kind of culture was that? You know, that was not fun. And, and so it's not natural for me to go, let's just celebrate. Let's just sit. Let's just take a step back yeah. and go, Hey, like we accomplished something. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so funny because it's funny how we can create these double standards, I think, because for me myself, did I want recognition from my boss? Did I want them to celebrate, you know, the things that I was doing? Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. and, and it was beyond just bonuses and pay. Of course, that's part of it. But did I want to be rewarded and recognized and celebrated and yeah. wins and whatever? Yeah. Did I do it? No. Yeah. What? You yeah. know, like, well, how does that how does that we, happen? Human personality sure complex yes right you think is. what you see is what you get no yeah. it's not yeah. necessarily we yeah. are messy creatures mm -hmm. all right so i want to um i think a, a really good final step to this is prioritizing continuous learning mm -hmm. um but before we get into there i just popped into my head that i feel like there's this definition of leadership and then this definition of manager mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe let's talk about the differences between being a manager and being a leader mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start by talking about manager for a second, because I think that is what a lot of people think about when they get promoted. Yeah. Um, because now I, I'm responsible for directing work, prioritization, uh, completing the performance review on my people. You know, I'm now involved in the hiring process. And so to me, management is really about the processes your organization uses to run the organization. And there are certain things that are unique to people who have direct reports, right? And, and I'll just say leadership is less, much less about a position and much more about a mindset. And for me, fundamentally, it's about balancing, yes, the productivity of your team, but also the engagement and connection with the people. So <clears throat> do you have to be a leader, uh, uh, have direct reports to be a leader? No, right? You probably have to have direct reports if you're going to be a manager, you know? So I mean, at least an initial thought to the conversation. Mm -hmm. What else would you guys add? Yeah, I mean, a manager, you know, manages work. Hey, you said that, right? Uh, a leader, you know, we could throw all the buzzwords in there, inspires people to get from one place to the other, right? Uh, I, I think I I watch people think that they're leading, but they're really managing. And, and I'll, I'll, in, a, in the sense that they're going somewhere, they have a plan and whatever, and then they turn around and no one's there behind them, right? And so the, the ability to influence and, and, and um, inspire and, you know, all those things is a sense that people, it's that motivation question, it's that personal connection, it's the trust, it's all those things is being a leader is actually what gets you there <laughs> it to, to that outcome that you want to see management is some of that nuts and bolts mm -hmm. kind of stuff yeah. that's that's how i think about it anyway mm -hmm. um it, it, is it possible to be a leader without and not be a manager yes mm -hmm. there's a lot of them like that mm -hmm. quite yes. honestly not knowing what it really means to be a leader well, we talk all the time about you, you got to know how to lead yourself first, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think when I think about managers, just even the way you were describing it um, first, Nate, it was interesting. It was almost like you were doing like little buckets, mm -hmm. right? So I'm managing either processes or mm -hmm. outcomes or I got to make sure this team is doing mm -hmm. that, et cetera. 
Um, and hopefully within that manager role, I am role playing or excuse me, modeling good leadership. Um, across. across exactly. Board, across yeah. all those different mm -hmm. pieces of managing. Well, I don't know. I, I, no, I, I think, yeah, you know, you, that, that sprung something for me is, is you do those management behaviors, those things, those or those, those um, different things like, I guess, performance evaluations. But the differentiation is the leader understands the why behind it and how it impacts and influences the person they're sitting mm -hmm. across from. The manager knows how to go through. Or I have to get this done. Right? I have to get this done. And they go through that because it's a part of the, you know, step-by-step -step yeah. job expectations. The leader understands the implications mm -hmm. of and the influence behind a well-done performance review mm -hmm. versus one that's just going through the motions. Yeah. The, the manager wants to get it done. The leader wants to get the result that is intended, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and not just yeah. the completion of the task. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Yesterday in, in class, we were just talking about this and I had two leaders in my class who I, I asked them about, you know, what is it like for you to do a performance review? And this is what their response was. It's a tick box. Yeah. I just tick this, make sure this, this, yes, no, whatever. And um, and I said, well, what does that mean from that? He goes, just got to make sure I get it done. Yeah. And I went, ah, see, they're missing mm -hmm. that that bigger picture on yeah. that whole piece. Yeah, so they're managing the task. Yes. But rather, yeah. we need to lead the growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. I want to talk real quickly, if we could, too, just about this idea of just being with your team. Mm -hmm. If you're a new leader, um, prioritizing your people and making sure they see you in the trenches not necessarily the one doing all the work but with them so yeah. let me give you an example back to that story where i was the hr manager for a couple of experts <clears throat> we got to the compensation processes that happened once a year and this happened to be for about a 200 team customer service department and so lots of moving parts with hourly increases, salary not exempt increases, salaried increases, and there are a lot of processes to manage. And it required a tremendous amount of spreadsheet work, you know, and just collecting data and entering it in and making sure it was all correct. And because you mess up people's pay, that's a big problem, right? There was almost zero that I could contribute to that process. But that process required my teammates to be there well into the night. So mm -hmm. eight o'clock, nine o'clock, tight deadlines, data came in late, got to turn it around, get ready for the meeting the next day and whatever. I mean, if we just look at it from the work that needs to be done, maybe this is the great, this is an example of the manager versus leader. I didn't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. I could have punched out at five o'clock, but I felt like I had to be with my team. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed and I asked them, I said, I don't know how to do this, but what can I do for you? Are there other things that you're working on that I can help with? Um, is, is there anything? And they were very gracious and kind. Um, and I don't even remember what I did. It wasn't much of value, at least to the process. But the value was to them. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So I ended up, you know, staying with them. Didn't think a lot of it. Um, but I got feedback a little while later from the team. Like, the fact that you stayed said so much to me about who you were as a leader mm. kind of person you are and i think that's something you just need to really think intentionally about when is it that you just need to be present with your people I love that, well, oh i i mean i think one Powerful. of the the yeah and one of the misconceptions i think we get when we get promoted is to think i got promoted so i don't got to deal with this stuff anymore yeah. <laughs> like i don't have to do the things i don't want to do anymore and mm -hmm. i can just hand that off or sometimes i like i don't know how to do this and it's mm. it's yeah. the people that i'm that i'm leading that do and too often and, and i saw that myself right is to sent the sense that now it um you know we can go one of two ways we can get too far into it and just step in and take over because we're better at it than them or we can remove ourselves completely from a situation because it's like, well, that's why I got promoted. So I don't have to do this stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And we were just having that conversation actually with, with a client of ours. Um, but I saw it myself too, um, is to think that, um, well, the work's being done. 
So well, I don't need to be there. Yeah. You get yeah, you go you go one of two two far directions. And we talk about this a lot and it's one of the things that I think resonates with a lot of our first time leaders that go through the leadership foundations class is the sense of the da- balcony and the dance floor. Right? Is talk like the, more about that. That is such a cool concept. It, it, I you know, I, yeah, I love the concept and I think a lot of people really it resonates with them and I ask them, you know, what's the things that you took took away from this class and that's one of the things that resonates uh, to the top in the sense that on the balcony, I see the big picture. I see where we're going. I see the, you know, the organizational objectives, right? All that stuff. And then from the dance floor, it's like I'm in the trenches doing the work up close and personal. I understand the nitty gritty stuff and like how work is actually accomplished and done. Mm. Right. So from the balcony, it's like you see the big picture, but you don't always see the intricacies of the work and the complications of sure. the work, all that stuff. And you're living in that space, you become the firefighter, right? You're just there doing all the work, putting out the fires and whatever. But you, if you never get to the balcony, you become disconnected from the big picture right. and right. how the things are impacting the overall organizational objectives and all of that stuff, which can become and you, and you become less strategic, right? In your approach, and you become just reactionary. On I like the dance that floor. balcony and the dance floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've always led creatives, and yeah. so I come from you know a very creative industry. And I've always kind of seen it as the leader's role is to define the picture frame mm. and then let the canvas be blank and let mm. your people fill it. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a time in my life where my job was to fill the canvas. Um, and then I stepped into a leadership role. And my job was to define the frame. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I needed to, I had the vision in mind and I may have imparted that vision, but then I needed to let them lead. So almost like standing from the balcony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think what the two of you just said those are important concepts to actually talk to your teams about to like actually have a conversation to say, you know, when I'm thinking about this project, I'm, I'm thinking about the frame or when I'm, you know, at times I'm going to have to be up here and I'm going to have to be overseeing things. So I think if we use language that brings people into the conversation, that connection to leadership is so important. It goes back to building that trust. Exactly. And and one thing I just wanted to say, Nate, with your story there, I guarantee you that that employee of yours um, is probably still sharing that story, Mm -hmm. right? And that's the impact influence that I think what we're trying. So as new leaders, I know we've kind of been all over the place a little bit, but hopefully you've, you've taken away some things here is to to really watch other people, watch other leaders as well. And I, I just think that was a mm. great story to share. Great. Yeah. Um, I think one more thing as we start to land this plane is um, I think it's important to give yourself freedom and permission to fail, mm. you know, in this, that we're all, you know, there are some things that you can learn and prioritizing continuous learning is super important. Um, I mean, we have a lot of programs that people could take part of, um, but I think it's also important to understand that you might fail. At it. And but you probably will fail. You yeah. probably will fail. That's Part of failure is growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think giving yourself that permission to mess up. Well, and what's the message when if if I mess up and I say, hey, Nick, you know, I know I had you work on X, Y, Z and I got to switch gears on you right now. I know you put a lot of work. That's on me. You know, how much further is that going to go when I'm just humbly I'm looking you in the eye, taking that ownership, taking that personal accountability. Um, how is that going to drive that much more on trust and go? It also gives you the message that it's okay for you to fail too, mm-hmm. right? We just learn from those yeah. things. I know it's naturally hard for people who are more um, perfectionists like yeah. me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do want to talk to people who might be listening to this and saying, well, this is all fun and games and good and all, but. I don't know if I can do this in my organization Mm. or my leaders don't act this Mm. way or whatever. I just want to say one of the cool things about being a leader, uh, a formal leader with a team is that you can make a difference no matter what your organization culture is like, no matter who who's on your team or who's above you. um, It is about a personal choice to try to create an environment where people are engaged and connected and you actually can make a difference. You may feel restricted in the big picture a little bit, but I would say um, the best leaders are going to figure out a way to connect with their teams, even in the midst of all of that. Mm. It's that sphere of influence. If, if yeah. all I have is three or four people, yeah. why can't I just bring out the best of leadership, the best of who I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly yeah. and 
do that. I, I, I hear that too often, I think. And mm-hmm. anyway, I was, a, you know, it's that victim mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Is like, uh, let me talk about that, right? Is the sense that, uh, well, nobody else is doing this, so I can't. It's not, well, it's it's not, not going to matter. Or it's right. not important. It's, it's not, not going to matter. You know, you know, yeah. And, and, and then that, I think as I watch a lot of new leaders, let that stop them mm-hmm. from, from really just going, okay, but what can I do? Exactly. Yeah. What am I going to take responsibility for? What am I going to, to do? It's like, there's always going to be the red tape, the frustrations, mm-hmm. the sure. bad leader above you. There's that, you know, regardless of where you go, um, there's always going to be those frustrations at different points. And I would say we're not really leading if we're, if we're, um, constantly pointing external to us saying it's, I can't do these things because so and 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 so. Well, doesn't that take us back to the very first thing we talked about, which is why are you a leader? Yeah, exactly. You know, and what's your motivation? Um, is it going to sustain you in those times? Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be a big part of it. You just reminded me of a, um, something I actually work on with my 10 year old daughter is the, um, the power of the word yet. Mm-hmm. And so you might say, I can't do this, but then add the word yet to it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it kind of changes it to more. Um, I love that. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's possible. That, so it's, that po- gross, it's possible. Gross just mindset. Not, yeah. yeah. And I, I think what we're talking about too is we're, as I'm listening to everybody share their thoughts on this, is there's a trajectory of leader, leadership ma- maturity. Right. Mm-hmm. So I might be that new leader who's like, I just got to get in and do what I have to do. But as you really start to pull back and you, you use some of these things that we've been talking about, I think we get into that natural sense of how do I mature as a leader um, and look at things differently. Mm-hmm. That's great. So we've talked about um, getting to know your team, defining the why, setting expectations and leading through them, prioritizing communication with clarity mm-hmm. and urgency and frequency and celebrating wins publicly giving feedback privately, and of course, prioritizing continuous learning. Real quick, as we land this plane, briefly, final takeaway, Nathan. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go back to the idea of being present. You know, mm-hmm. connect with your people and let them know you're there. Being the present or being a present? Well, you could be both. <laughs> you could yeah. be both, You could yeah. be both, for sure. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, yeah, I think what's struck me has been the that why question right and and you know what do you believe about people uh i I genuinely believe anybody has the capacity to be a leader uh i think the question is whether or not you want to be a leader uh and you know we all are going to have strengths and challenges in our role as a leader so no one is precluded i think i hear that a lot is like wait a second I always thought I was too shy or too introverted to be a leader. I always thought I was, you know, talk about that self, that introspection. So I, I thought I was discounted from a role like this because everybody I see in leadership is really dominant and, you know, vocal and whatever. It was like, no, the question is, do you want to be a leader? And then what skills do you need to be able to do that? Because it's, yeah, it's, it's more than just being able to be the loudest voice in the room. Hmm. Right. Good. Final takeaway, Lauren. Yeah, I would say um, be curious as a new leader. Be curious, do introspection of yourself, watch other leaders, um, and have an open mind to learn. That's great. I'd say my final takeaway is to um, know that you're not alone. And let's say that you have um, a new leader in your organization. You are a new leader. You're not doing this alone. You're not in this alone. Here at Frontline Training Solutions, we have solutions available to equip leaders for success. And we want to help you grow. We want to help you get there. Um, so subscribe to this podcast, reach out if you have a question that you'd like answered or contact us if you want to know more about our trainings and solutions. We want to thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time behind the front line.